Well, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. It's your buddy CJ here. And tonight, we're talking about all things automotive industry, the automotive enthusiast hobby, cars, 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 all the things that real gearheads love talking about. Real gearhead talk. This is the place to be for that real gearhead talk. Welcome back to all of my subscribers. You know your buddy CJ loves each and every one of you. I'm so grateful for you. If you're new to the channel, please give me a like and subscribe. Around here, we're all about anything, listen, with four wheels and an engine. Your buddy CJ, a lifelong car guy, a real gearhead. Over the decades, I've been all about cars. Come on. And I know if, you're, if you found my channel, you, you and I got something in common, right? We are passionate about the automotive industry. We are passionate about cars. We enjoy motorsports. We enjoy automotive events, road trips, okay? Rallies, all those things that real car guys are into or some mix thereof. We love exotic cars, sports cars, muscle cars. We love them all. Come on, let's go ahead and get into it. Guys, I thought what I would do for tonight's episode is to come on here and talk a bit about the Chevrolet Corvette C8 Z06. Should you buy one? Now, by way of background, your buddy CJ, for those of you that follow my channel, all my buddies out there, you know that I recently, about five weeks ago, I purchased a Chevrolet Corvette C8 Z06. And I am nuts about the car. I'm going to tell you some background about why I bought my C8 Z06. I'm going to talk to you about my initial ownership experience. But I want to talk about you. Real talk. This episode is about you, not me. But if I can impart some of my ownership experience and some of my rationale, the way I kind of think about these things, and it helps you and make your decision, Listen, that's what we do as car guys. We love talking about this stuff. And that's my mission. That's really my mission and objective on this episode is to talk to you a little bit about my experience, my decision, my thought process in buying a C8 Z06 and what it's been like. And hopefully that helps you. And guys, the other thing I'll say before we get right into it is leave me those comments. Leave me those comments. Let's talk about it, guys. And first things first. So let me go ahead and share my screen because you know on this channel, we love looking at these things together. So the Chevrolet C8 Z06. Now, I'm not going to go over all the specs with you on this episode. That's been done at length, ad nauseum, all over the internet, all over YouTube. It's all out there, right? It is a ridiculous super sports car. It is the ultimate C8 Corvette. Okay? It is just... It is a fabulous, super high-performance car for the street. It's got the chops on the track, okay? And on the street, it's about as much fun as you can have. Absolutely ridiculous. 670 horsepower, naturally aspirated, flat plane crank V8. The noise and the sound that these cars make, the performance, and it is kind of next level. Now... Let me talk to you before I get into you and some key decision points. I want to talk a little bit about why I bought a C8 Z06. So truth be told, your buddy CJ, you know, I said I'm a lifelong car guy and I am. I'm not a Corvette nut where I only have to own Corvettes all the time. And the only car on the road that I even acknowledge is a Corvette. I am not that guy. You know, I always say I'm a car guy. I'm not necessarily a Corvette guy, but I really like Corvettes and I've owned several. Heck, I've owned several of many cars. OK, and I'll own a bunch more. OK, but what I'm telling you, the reason I share that is because I'm not just a shill for the Corvette. Right. I'm going to tell you like it is that real gearhead talk. That's what it's all about. I'm going to be straight with you. All right. I'm going to move beyond the hype and beyond what you might see in some track review. OK, track reviews are great. And I watch them just as much as you do because we're car guys, right? But real talk, 90% of Corvette owners will never be on a track. Newsflash, Corvette owners, you are not race car drivers. Those guys you see getting those Nürburgring times and, and racing the Ferrari against the Corvette versus the Lamborghini and the McLaren on the track and doing those laps, yeah, that's not you. You will never do that. I know there's a small percentage of guys who are legit track guys but I'm certainly not one of them. Like I've done some fun laps, some hot laps, some parade laps, but I have no misconception 
that I am any sort of race car driver or that I'm going to get nine tenths out of this car. I'm, I'm just not. I have another super high performance car sitting in my garage. I'm not going to get nine tenths out of that car either. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a guy who enjoys high performance cars on the street. Will I do a little bit of track stuff? Possibly. I do road trips. I do rallies. I do beach runs. I do mountain runs. You know, I'm getting ready to do a bunch of events. I've been invited to, uh, you know, driving some serious distances. So why do I share that? Because for me, you know, my C8 purchase decision was going back to my Stingray. I really want a car that I can road trip in and have a lot of fun that's also super high performance. Now, the Stingray checked a lot of those boxes. As you know, your buddy CJ or those that follow my channel, I also had a 2021 Corvette Stingray Z51. I loved that car. I paid a premium for that car. I don't mind telling you, but I enjoyed it. I drove that car for 18,000 miles in three years, you know, which is pretty good for a Corvette. You know, I drove that car all over this country. I drove that car to the beach, to the mountains, everywhere in between. You know, I just had a complete blast. I enjoyed that car. Having said that, I always had my eye on the Z06 since it was announced. Full transparency, there's really two reasons why I only just recently bought a Z06. You guys want to know the truth? Real talk? The reason I didn't buy a C8 Z06 sooner Number one, I really loved my C8 Stingray Z51. That was a great car. You know, it just did everything well. It was good on road trips. It was fast. It was quick. You know, I had the torch red with the black trim, a bunch of other appearance options out of the factory. I thought it was a really good looking car. You know, I, I just really enjoyed it. A lot of great memories. I almost shed a tear when I traded that car in. Now, having said that, I knew that the Z06 was just next level. The issue is two things. You know, now number two, Z06. Overall, the reason I didn't buy one sooner, I was waiting for the market to adjust a bit and I was looking for the right deal. Notice I didn't say I was looking for a bargain because I'm going to come to that in a minute. C8 Z06 is not a bargain. Newsflash, all these guys who run around telling you, you know, the C8 Z06 is a great performance bargain because it's cheaper than a Ferrari, Lamborghini, or McLaren. Yeah, okay, but it's not a Ferrari, Lamborghini, or McLaren. It's a Corvette. Newsflash, wake up, boys. Your Corvette, I don't care if it's a Z06, a ZR1, or whatever, and I got a Z06 sitting in my garage. It is not. It's just not a Ferrari, McLaren, or Lamborghini. It's a super Corvette. So that argument, kind of silly. In my opinion, you can make all the comments you want. Listen, these, and I, and I love your comments, by the way. These cars hang with supercars, but it's still a Chevrolet Corvette. And that's not a negative thing. I'm just stating facts. You are still driving a Chevrolet. The same company that, that, uh, that brings you Silverado pickup trucks and SUVs. And Malibu's, it's the same company. Like this is not a supercar company. They have produced in this Corvette a super high performance sports car in the C8 platform, as they did in the C7, the C6, the C5 before it. The C8 Z06 is probably the pinnacle in many ways, okay? ZR1 is coming, will be an extremely limited run, of course, but right up there with the Z06, right? Just absolutely the pinnacle of Corvette engineering up to this point. But it's still... So here's what the point I want to make on the price point now that we're talking about it. It's still a ridiculously expensive Chevrolet Corvette. Real talk. Forget about comparing it to Ferrari, Lamborghini, and McLaren. As a Corvette, it is two times the sticker of your typical C8 right now. So you're t you can get a very nice C8 Stingray between $60,000 and $80,000. You can get a fantastic used Stingray. You might even be able to get a new one. You're not touching a nice Z06 for less than one thirty, okay, in the market. With markups, $150, 160 180 Z07 package. So you do the math, right? I get a nice goose out Stingray for let's say 70. Call it 70. If I want a nice goose out 
Z06, 70 times 2 is 140. That's what you're looking at. So when you look at it that way, guys, stop saying the Z06 is a performance bargain. It's not. If you want to talk performance bargain, and this gets to my first point, look at C8 Stingray. Now, listen. I say all of that to say this. The two things that kept me from buying a C8 Z06 earlier, number one, as I said, I just loved my C8 Stingray, and I always had a super, uh, a second super high-performance extreme car. So I was, you know, I was being patient, I'd say. Number two, I was waiting for the market to adjust downward, which it did. Still not a bargain, though. So the other thing I was really looking for was the right one. Now, I'd been offered allocations at various markups. And I, I'd also been offered an allocation at zero markup, but I didn't feel like waiting. You know, So I was really looking to snag one on the secondary market or a new car in dealership inventory. Okay, so I was looking. I was looking to snipe one, the right one, uh, and I was looking to negotiate. So I found the one in mine, uh, 2023 C8 Z06 2LZ package, okay? Blacked out. You know, this, this episode isn't really about my car. I've got another ep another couple of episodes covering that, and I'll have some more. You can what, check out my channel if you want to see more about my car, more content coming. Uh, but really found one that I fell in love with and negotiated on on it over the course of a number of weeks, weeks I negotiated on this car. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I was patient, you know, and I knew it was the one, but I wasn't going to be heartbroken if I didn't get it. If somebody else had bought the car, I would have bought another one, but I really wanted this one. And I ended up with it. It's in my garage right now. I'm going to drive it in a little while. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, guys, let's get back to it. My initial ownership experience, because before I tell you what I think you should do and consider, I want to share a little bit more about my ownership experience. So what I will tell you is over the past several weeks owning the C8 Z06, I don't like this car. I love it. I love everything about it, guys. This car is ridiculous. The more I've driven it, the more I like it. The more I drive it, the more I want to drive it. Does that make sense? I'm getting ready for a couple of road trips and events, some groups I'm associated with, and I can't wait to get this car out on the road. I already did a rally with Blacktop Excursions. Shout out to my boys, Eli and Mark uh, at Blacktop Excursions, and the car was just fabulous. This car has all of the comfort and amenities of the C8 platform, coupled with a powertrain that's just on 11 at all times. Guys, Anything that a C8 Stingray does, a C8 Z06 just does better and more extreme. The C8 Stingray is a fun car, and it is a fast car. It's also kind of smooth and has a chill side, kind of a, you know, you, 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 can, you can lull yourself to sleep in that C8 Stingray, right? And those that have owned them know what I'm talking about. Yeah, can, you can get on it, and you can get into it with a C8 Stingray. But it's also got kind of that chill Sunday afternoon vibe to it, if you want it to. C8 Z06? No, 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 no. C8 Z06 is a very intense, over-the-top driving experience. I will tell you right now, as an owner of both cars and as an owner of many performance cars, the C8 Z06 is an extremely different driving experience than the C8 Stingray. Do not let anybody tell you different. The C8 Z06 is a different driving experience than a Stingray. It's not just faster and quicker. It is focused. It is intense. It is extreme. Notice I didn't say harsh. Car is not harsh. The car does not make you sick. <laughs> when you drive it and downshift it and, and all these things. I've had people like in my Huracan, and when I'm I'm getting aggressive with it, that's a harsh car. I've had one dude was hanging out with me. He's like, yo, CG, I'm getting a little sick because, you know, even though it's got that smooth dual clutch, it's extreme upshift and downshift when you want it to be. C8Z06, you get some of that, but 
it, it does it's not as harsh okay as as like a, a as an aggressive supercar like a huracan or something like that okay i'm just telling you like it is from my ownership experience the c8 c06 is so ridiculous the way it sounds real life experience i was at a community event yesterday i'm not kidding and I'm walking out, talking to a buddy, and my C8 Z06 is parked out there. And there were people in the parking lot hanging out, talking. I hit my start button. My C8 Z06 was so loud and ridiculous. People were looking and staring at it. Now, why do I tell you that? Listen, there have been loud cars for decades, folks, right? Like somebody could have a Ford Mustang with an aftermarket exhaust. You could have an F-150 pickup truck with straight pipes. You could have your Camaro uh, with headers and cat-back exhaust and all those things. And they're loud. People hear loud cars every day. <clears throat> Who cares, right? What I've noticed over the past few weeks with the C8 Z06, real talk, people lose their mind when they hear it because it doesn't sound like anything else on the road. It doesn't just sound like a loud muscle car. Nope. It doesn't, you know, it's more akin to like some super high performance motorcycle, maybe. Like people are just confused when they see it. And some of you will look at me and say, that that doesn't make any sense. It's a flat plane crank, 670 horsepower V8. And you're right. But because of that, it is an extremely unique, audible experience. Your buddy CJ is going deaf. No, I'm kidding. Listen, guys, I'm telling you like it is. This car doesn't sound like any other Corvette ever. And it doesn't sound like really any other performance car. The one that I'll compare it to, are you ready? And this may surprise you from the cars that I've owned and actually driven, like a McLaren 570, okay, something like that. And I know the McLaren, you know, smaller displacement, higher revving, uh, about the same, actually, from a rev standpoint. Smaller displacement twin turbo V8. Okay, also flat plane crank. But the, the Corvette is closer to that than anything else you've ever driven with a V8. Except maybe like a Ferrari or something like that. Let's put a pin in that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you like it is. This thing is just over the top. The way it shifts the noises it makes, the pops, okay? The way it handles, okay? Everything in the C8 Z06 is just extra, okay? So everything you love about your Stingray, if you really want to keep your Stingray, do not drive a Z06 because I'll tell you what, this car will break your heart. You will want one. I'm just telling you like it is. Here's a food analogy. Your, brother, your buddy CJ is always thinking about food. You know that. If you know me, you know that. I'm thinking about cars and food. Come on. Oreos. Oreos are great cookies, right? Oreos are, are one of my favorite cookies. Now, if you're into the cream in the Oreo, and you really like the cream, you go for the double stuff. But not everybody needs all that cream, right? The basic Oreo is still a good cookie, but the double stuff is better. Perfect analogy for the C8 Z06. A Stingray is a regular Oreo. It is a nice balance of chocolate cookie and cream filling, but if you want the cream over the top, extreme cookie experience, you go with the double stuff. That's your C8 Z06. Y'all going to laugh at that analogy, but it's true. It is so true. It's extra. It's over the top. And it's also at a higher price point. So I, listen, I do not regret it. It is a fun car. It is a ridiculous car. And I love it. And I'm really getting into it. Now, let's talk about your decision point. First things first, if you're looking for the bargain, if you're the guy, here's a Corvette analogy, right? If you're the guy who, with a C8 Stingray, said, I'm not getting a Z51 because I'm not going to track it, and I want to save 6000 bucks." If you're that guy, Z06 is not for you. Sorry, it's just not. This car is not for that guy. There's a whole population of Corvette owners. And listen, I'm not hating on you. I'm just telling you like it is. You know, I, I know, I know all you car guys. I know you very well. So I'm just, if I'm calling you out, it is what it is. You know it's all in love. 
all in fun with your buddy CJ. Leave me those comments. But in all seriousness, I know a whole population of Corvette guys who will buy the cheapest stripped down base Corvette that they can. Then they start bolting on all this aftermarket stuff. Like they're too cheap for the Z51 package, yet they'll be the first ones to complain about the exhaust. Be honest. Are you the guy who bought the non-Z51, C8, or C7, and then you complain about the exhaust, especially the C8? So what's the first thing they do? They buy exhaust. Okay. So what's the deal? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. The C8 Z51 sport exhaust valved it works so well and sounds so great on a Stingray. Why are you going to cheap out and put some aftermarket that may or may not work right? I don't know. And then if you make it too loud, it's too over the top. It really doesn't sound that great, in my opinion. Same thing with like the wings and the ground effects and the chin spoiler. They go non-Z51 and then they proceed to try to make their car look like a Z51. It makes no sense. You know what it says to me? You ain't fooling anybody. You ain't fooling me. It tells me you're cheap or that, you know, you're trying to make your car look like something it isn't. I'm just being real with you. If that's you, you do you, brother, and enjoy it. All I'm telling you is you are probably not the right buyer for the C8 Z06 because you ain't touching one of these cars for less than 2x, probably, of what you paid for your C8. And when you go to trade your C8 Stingray in, I don't care what stuff you've stuck on with double stick or drilled into your car to put the ground effects on or some ridiculous wing that don't even look right. You're not getting that back. You're going to lose your shirt. Okay? So double whammy. This, the Z06 is probably not for you. And overall, maybe you don't have a C8 currently and you're looking for one. It is not a bargain for all the reasons I just said. Well, if you compare it to a McLaren, it's a bargain. Yeah, but it's not a McLaren. Compare it to other Corvettes, it's not a bargain, okay? So my first comment, I say all of that to say to you with much love and respect because your buddy CJ tells it like it is, and I care about you guys. Make sure you can afford this car. If, if it's too much of a budget stretch, you will get a C8 Stingray. You will love it. I suggest you go with a Z51 for all the reasons I mentioned. Don't go non-Z51 unless you have to. But you're probably going to want a Z51. Exhaust. Brakes. You know. Differential. Spoiler. All the things that come with the Z51 package, it's worth it. It's not just for the track. Anyone who tells you that the Z51 package is just for the track, good indication that you're talking to a cheapskate who really doesn't, who's really not a car guy. Like they're looking to save a buck. We're not buying groceries here, people. If, you know, if I go to the grocery store, your buddy CJ is going to tell a story on myself. Can I talk about myself for a minute and be real with you? If I go to the grocery store, I like Diet Coke. I like Diet Pepsi. I'm not really loyal to either brand, you know, and if one is buy two six packs, get three free and the other is full regular price, I don't care if it's Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke, I'll buy either one. It's groceries, right? And I don't like, I don't like, uh, I like saving a buck on groceries. When it comes to cars, yeah, no, I, I'm not looking for a bargain as my first and primary attribute. I got to feel the car. I got to be passionate about it. It's got to be something I want. This is my primary hobby. Okay, I'm also at a point in life, my kids are grown, my kids are off and married, right? So I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> you know, I've been very fortunate. I don't mind telling you, okay, in a lot of ways. So for me, you know, I, I'm not out there looking for a bargain basement Corvette. My advice to any first-time Corvette buyer, number one, buy the car you can afford. I would never encourage anyone, you know, I'm a fiscally responsible cat, your buddy CJ. I would never encourage anyone to get ahead of themselves, to get over their skis and buy something that they really can't afford. Now, having said that, my advice to the first time Corvette buyer, buy as much Corvette as you can afford. Let me say that again. Buy as much Corvette as you can afford by way of year, 
platform and trim package. Now, folks will have different preferences. Maybe they prefer a C7 over a C8. Maybe you prefer a C6 for whatever reason. I don't know. Depending on your budget, if you're going to go, let's say you, you decide, look, I can afford a C5, a fully goosed out C5. That's kind of where I'm at. Buy as much C5 as you can. Maybe try to land an unmolested C5 Z06. You will never regret that approach. You will never regret that approach. You may regret the approach. You ready? And by the way, I've made every mistake in the book. When it comes to buying cars over four decades, your buddy CJ has made every mistake in the book. So when I'm talking to you candidly and I'm making suggestions, don't take it personal. If you've made these mistakes or if you think I'm talking to you and calling you out, I'm really not. It's because I've made all the mistakes and I'm trying to share my experience with you. It's out of love and caring and a mutual respect. And as fellow car guys, you know, we should share information, right? So look, I'm, you know, I, I, I pull rank on some of you guys. If you've never been there and done that, well, I'm telling you like it is from my experience. If your experience is different, that's cool too. Leave me those comments. All I'm telling you, I have met countless guys who have bought less car because they were looking to save a buck and then they end up regretting it and then they end up trading up. It's the same thing with motorcycles. Where are my motorcycle guys out? You know, you go and you say, well, I really want the, you know, I really want the 1200, but the 883 is so much cheaper. You buy the Harley 883 and then in six months, you're like, yo, I've outgrown this thing. Now I got to trade up to a 1200. I'm going to lose my shirt on my 883. Dang it. I wish I had just gone with the 1200. The same thing applies with Corvettes. So let me bring it back to the Z06. First things first, it does come down to budget. Budget. I didn't say, you know, this was the car for cheapskates. I didn't say this was the car for someone looking for a performance bargain because I claim it's not a performance bargain. C8 Z06 is a premium and expensive Corvette. There's better deals on high-performance Corvettes than a C8 Z06 right now. Why the hell do you think I didn't buy one sooner? I would have bought one a year ago. But the market was just insane, right? Your buddy CJ is patient and prudent, okay, financially. Now, some might argue that our hobby is not, is not prudent, <laughs> and that would be true. But in general, I'm looking to optimize you know, the, the price point that I snag a car like this or, or something similar anytime I buy a car. And it doesn't always work out. And I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. That's why I'm trying to impart to you and hopefully help you avoid making a mistake. So I guess what I'm telling you is, guys, um, if you're the guy who's looking for that bargain and you're, you, you know, this is probably not the car for you is my point. So let's let's put a pin in that. And I'm going to move on to point two right now but before i do let's sh let's share a different screen here here's another look at the c8 z06 okay and what i'm going to tell you is you know if, if you came to me and said hey cj i'm looking to get a c8 should i consider a z06 or should i consider a stingray first things first i'm going to want to talk to you i'm going to want to understand how you're going to use the vehicle and what your history has been with performance cars. Like, you know, if you're a guy who is going to road trip the car and, you know, just kind of cruise in it and maybe use it as, as sort of a, da you know, a secondary daily, dare I say, Stingray could be a, a perfect option for you. And if you're not into uh, sort of the ultimate in high performance and, and uh, you want something that maybe in, and don't take this the wrong way, but maybe that your wife will be willing to drive. Who's, who's a little bit intimidated by high performance cars, or if you're a little bit intimidated by super high performance cars, I would probably say the stingray is going to give you so much excitement and such a fun experience. Go with the stingray. Okay. And you will never regret it. I loved my Stingray Z51. I think the Z51 is an important package on the Stingray, 100%. That's not to say they aren't really good without it. But guys, you can have a ridiculous amount of fun as an ownership experience with a C8 Stingray. There's tons of them on the market now. But if you're that guy 
that is really looking for the ultimate in street performance and something that could be the ultimate track car, that's when I start to say, start looking at the Z06. Now, that doesn't make number one go away, which is the budget constraint, right? Because when you just look at the numbers, it's like, can I really justify this? Do I get a fully loaded Stingray of my choice for like 80K, 70K? Or I get the Z06 thing for 120, 140K, 150K? Well, what's, what, what is that extra fun worth to you? Okay, do you have the disposable income? Are you the guy that needs the best, highest performance? I'll be honest with you. I wanted the ultimate Corvette experience, and I got it. Okay? And for me, worth the price of admission. Now, I might be at a different phase of life than you, or maybe you're at the same phase of life as me, and you say, CJ, even though you know I've got the means and all those other things, I still wouldn't spring for a Z06. Good for you. All I'm saying is these are the factors that I've considered, and you should consider it too. And it's a decision that only you can make. Okay? The other thing I'll say is if you're a guy who wants to go with the pack, you know, and, and you're okay with that, like there are now a lot of C8 Stingrays in many regions, not in every region. Like where I live in the Charlotte area, they're everywhere, right? You see a lot of C8 Stingrays during the week, you know, uh, at the parking lots, at the car shows, you'll see them. I've been to areas of the country where you still don't see those cars. Okay, so there is still a special and unique factor. I mean, listen, it is, it's definitely a, a special car, a C8 Stingray. Don't get me wrong. And I love my C8 Stingray when I had it. All I'm saying is if you really want to be differentiated and stand out and you want to be that guy that knows that the car he's in is the king of the hill, that's where you start looking at Z06. And I can't answer that question for you. Number one, I don't know if it's in your budget. And that's a consideration. The market has adjusted, but these cars are still ridiculously expensive for a Corvette. Newsflash, don't let anybody tell you different. I'm going to say it again because it's important. C8 Z06 is not a performance bargain. Don't believe the hype. Maybe when you compare it to a Ferrari, which is ridiculous, or a Lamborghini or a McLaren, I don't care if it's faster or slower. It's not in the same class in terms of brand and car and, and level of automobile. It's just not. Performance is another thing. Yes, it's super high performance. It's right up there, but it's still a Chevrolet. And I don't say that to be negative, but again, real talk. That's what I'm about. It is a ridiculously expensive Corvette. Mustang GTD is going to be a ridiculously expensive Mustang. It is not for every, it's not for most Mustang owners. Hell, the, the, the latest Mustang GT500 is not for most Mustang owners. Same thing applies to the Z06. An $80,000 Mustang is out of reach for many Mustang guys. I'm just being real with you. It's ridiculous. America's sports car since 1964, the Mustang. You could spend $80,000 for a Mustang? <laughs> That's crazy, right? Come on, guys. Z06 at 140,000, 150,000, 130,000, 170,000 dollars. That's a lot of money for a Corvette. That's a lot of money. Now, it is a special Corvette, but let's be real. There's a lot of incredible Corvettes out there. C8s, 60, 70, 80, 90,000. C7s. Listen, you can get a C7 Z06, a nice one for 70 grand and ridiculous performance. Now, Listen, I'll be honest with you. C7 Z06 is a little played out. There's a ton of them. I don't have the numbers in front of me. How boring is that? Numbers. <laughs> Come on, guys. But uh, they're just, you know, they've just been out for a long time. And yes, they are fabulous. I've driven them. I've, I've almost bought a couple of them. Hell, who knows? Maybe I'll snag one of those at some point. But uh, probably not. You know, it's just, do you want something truly differentiated, king of the hill, Top of the mark from a Corvette standpoint. And if so, Z06 is probably your car, but it comes at a cost. You know, another good analogy here, and let's let's change the uh, screen again, because that's what we do. That's what we do. And guys, leave me those comments. Hopefully you're having as much fun. You know, 
my channel is always in good spirit with a bit of a sense of humor. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, guys, anything that I say here, it's just car guys talking car, car stuff. Uh, no insult intended, but if you're insulted, Hey, look, sorry, not sorry. You know, your buddy CJ loves you, but guys, here's another look at a C8Z06, you know, same analogy and all the things I've been talking to you about with the Z06 can be said of like a Porsche 911. All 911s are great. Every single one of them. Carrera S is probably the sweet spot, in my opinion. Leave me comments if you disagree. More performance than anybody needs. More performance than anybody needs unless you're going on the track, unless you're an extreme driver. Now, above and beyond that, you could get a GT car. You can get a GT3. You can go Turbo S. That's the dentist car. You don't want that. You could go GT3, right? Ultimate track weapon. A lot of those GT3s will never see a track from many of their owners, right? Some of them will. A lot of Porsche guys are legit track guys. But that is a street legal road going car with track capability. Okay, no doubt. Street legal race car, you could argue that. But most guys driving a Porsche 911 GT3 do not need a 911 GT3. They would they would be they they would tick all the boxes really around performance that they need on the street having fun in a Carrera S. Maybe a GTS. But there's a class of car buyer, dare I say a level of car buyer that says I want the best. I want the ultimate. Yeah, I would enjoy a Carrera S, but I want race car. Therefore, I'm going to sprint. You know, let's say I could get a nice Carrera S for 120,000. A fully, you know, well, even say like 100,000. You could get a nice Carrera S used secondary market for about 100 grand. You're looking probably close to 200 grand to get a fully loaded, you know, 992 generation GT3. Maybe a little bit less, okay? But it's a huge premium. My point being, between a Carrera S or even a Carrera to a GT3, it's almost a 2X. It can be a 2X, just like the Z06, right? The Z06 compared to a Stingray is a 2X. It's two times the price for a really nice Stingray C8 to a really nice Z06 C8. Two times the price. It is two times the price for a really nice Carrera or Carrera S, depending, to a really nice GT3. It's about two times the price, plus or minus. So you see where I'm going with this. Comes down to what your objectives are. Comes down to your budget, your passion for the car. If you're looking for the cheapskate buy, if you're looking for the bargain, if we're talking about Porsches, I'd be like, yo, Carrera, there's your bargain. 991 Carrera. Go buy it. You will love that car. It's not a GT3. It's not a Turbo S. It's not a GTS. But there's your bargain. You want the ultimate Porsche? Now we talking. Okay, Turbo S in terms of speed. Okay. GT3, GT3 RS. But what's your budget? Is that too much car for you? Right? See, it's all subjective. But let's bring it back to the Z06. Guys, I'm going to say it again. There really is no bad option with a C8 Corvette, in my opinion. I think if you're a first-time Corvette buyer, it's probably a prudent move. You know, start out with a Stingray, see what you think. You know, I, I do like to apply my metric to say buy as much Corvette as you can reasonably afford, and you'll never regret it. <laughs> C8 Z06 is an extreme focused, intense car that is so over the top. It is the double stuff Oreo of cars. There's nothing wrong with a regular Oreo cookie, okay? But for those that like the cream, you're going to go with the double stuff, right? The C8 Z06 is the double stuff Oreo cookie of Corvettes, okay? A Stingray is a regular Oreo, and regular Oreos are fabulous. Hell, I'll eat a box of them this afternoon if I can. <laughs> but if you can afford it, and if you're at that phase of life where it makes sense, you get a C8 Z06, and it's just a very different experience. It will blow your mind. The C8 Z06 is a mind-blowing car. 
It is an extreme, over-the-top animal in every sense of the word. It is suitable for road trips. I've already done a couple. I'm getting ready to do a couple more. But which one's for you? Again, I claim it, it, it kind of comes down to the individual. Hopefully, my episode was helpful here. I just wanted to come on, guys, and share some of my thoughts about the main differences to consider. You know, is a C8 Z06 the right car for you right now? It depends. I claim I want you to strongly consider some of those factors that I mentioned. Be real. Be honest with yourself. You know your buddy CJ makes a lot of jokes, and I have a lot of fun on this channel, but don't take any of it personal. I say it all the time. It's all out of love. You know how much I appreciate each and every one of you. We like to have fun around here and just really talk about cars, and that's what we do. So, guys, give me a like and subscribe. Leave me those comments. Let me know what you think about the C8Z06, about the Stingray. Do you have one? Do you have both? What are your thoughts? What went into your decision-making process? Am I wrong about anything? We can disagree and still be friends. You know your buddy CJ still loves you, even if we disagree. But guys, leave me those comments. Give me a like and subscribe. And uh, until we meet again on the next one, peace.